This is the Bristol for anti-bloodhound, Britain's foremost ground-to-air guided missile, now in quantity production for the Royal Air Force. It's powered by four booster rockets and a built-in ramjet. The booster rockets build up the missile speed, then drop away, leaving the bloodhound to hunt down its quarry automatically. On the test bed at the Havilands, a new British rocket engine, the Spectre. The powerful little Spectre, it's only 56 by 32 inches, is designed as a booster for turbojet aircraft. And not just a takeoff booster. It can be switched on and off during flight whenever its help is wanted, and it can operate at full thrust for several minutes. Here's the inside of the Spectre. It runs on a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and kerosene, which simplifies fuel supply, for kerosene is the fuel used by turbojet engines. And here's the Super Sprite, a rocket booster which can be jettisoned by an aircraft after takeoff. An Australian missile which is still so secret, it hasn't even got a name. It's a short-range anti-tank weapon, used like field artillery, fired over open sights, but accurate within inches. And here's the Royal Artillery's ground-to-air missile, the English Electric Thunderbird. Simple to assemble and operate, the Thunderbird does a similar job to the RAF's Bloodhound, but unlike the rocket and jet Bloodhound, it's an all-rocket affair. The Army's ACAC weapons have to be mobile, and the Thunderbird can be brought into action wherever it's needed. The Thunderbird's launching ramp is laid on a bearing and angle transmitted from the radar set, and the missiles fired. Like the Bloodhound, it seeks out the target by its own electronic brain. There is no escape from these latest additions to Britain's rocket armory.